Good evening. Hello, everyone. My name is Wayne Davis, uh, soon to be the ex interim director, uh, executive director of LexArt. Uh, Matthew Siegel will be starting up as our new executive director in a couple of weeks. We're real excited about that. Uh, <clears throat> Let me just welcome all of you to LexArt Inspires. This is our series of online conversations with artists about what sparks light them up. Here at LexArt, our vision is to enrich lives and build community through the making of art and craft. And tonight we're going to extend or expand our vision of how we make community to include laughter and good times, always important build community by supporting, encouraging, and inspiring artisans at all stages of their creative journeys. And we're promoting community engagement with art and craft by providing studio space, gallery shows, classes, workshops, and special events like what we're doing tonight. Tonight's program, uh, we're calling Funny Women, Strange Times. Our two guests have much in common. They are women. I know this because we found them in Mitt Romney's notebooks. So we can assure <laughs> that. Um, but they also share other things in common, uh, one of which is a rather curious obsession with our four-legged domestic companions. And you'll be hearing more about that later on this evening. Um, but really, most importantly, they are two longtime friends with uh, what I would call, as I've discovered over the last couple of weeks, a slightly whacked out sense of humor that they love to share with each other and with the world in cartoons. Susie Becker appears in The New Yorker and other august venues, has been on the New York Times bestseller list with one of her books. Hilary Price um, is in the syndicated comic strip, Rhymes with Orange. I've been a fan of that for years and years. And both of them are in best-selling books, some of which you can find for sale at our LexArt Inspires online shop at LexArt.org. Hillary and Susie, Susie Becker, welcome to LexArt Inspires. So, thank you. Thank you. I just want to tell a quick story before we get into the meeting. Okay, meeting. tell a quick story. Go for it. Which is that right before I came here, I went to pick up my farm share. I was in the barn and there, you know, was there with a woman uh, and she had her mask on like this. And we had to put the, the kale in the plastic bag. And so she, she took her mask down and <laughs> licked her fingers in order to open the bag. Yeah. Yeah. So Aurora, my daughter, when she was little, oh, she's listening and she loves the story about her. She can let you know in the chat. That was her thing. She had seen somebody that she used to read books to herself and she'd go like this and then turn the page with the other hand like this. <laughs> so there's, we've covered um, licking. So yes. now we can... <laughs> I have, I have a, um, I have a farm share cartoon. Can I just share okay. it right now? Oh, yeah, sure. share it with the farm. Uh, here is the cartoon, Summer's Bounty. We're having kale stuffed kale with kale sauce and everyone's going to like it. It's the tyranny yes. of the farm share. It's hard. There, people, were, people were rolling on that one. You just don't, where they're muted. So don't feel <laughs> you're hanging out there. Don't feel like you're, yeah, it was a good one. Whew. All right, Wayne, go ahead, fire go away. On. Okay, fire. so where do you get your ideas? You go first. You mean like which store? Yeah. Because, um, all right, I'll go first. I'll go first. Um, so thank you, Wayne. Thanks, Lexington Arts and Crafts. Thanks especially to Molly Nye, who came up with the idea of having us on, which is great. Oh, and like you didn't announce the bathrooms and the emergency exit. The emergency <laughs> exit is the red button at the bottom of your screen. If you need, you leave the meeting. If any, if you have to do that, that's fine. Um, we're not keeping track. All right, so I get my ideas. I'm, I'm spent, you know, using a lot of my time because it's not a great, really interesting answer. I get all of my ideas really from my, my life as I go about it. So um, for my cat book, um, all I need to know, I learned from my cat, for those of you who don't have the double platinum edition, um, it is available in the store, signed with proceeds going to the store. Um, I got that idea. I'd never had a cat before. I was a dog person growing up. Um, 
and actually I used the money from the book to get my first dog. But anyway, um, yeah, so I, I found all my cat's behaviors kind of strange. And then I thought, well, maybe she's trying to teach me something. And I quickly came up with those. Um, it was different though with actually with this book, I had brain surgery. What's your excuse? Um, that is actually from a focus group I did. Um, I wanted to write a memoir and, um, and there was a lot of interest um, in brain surgery. And I thought, okay, if, you know, if I have an audience for it, I will submit to brain surgery and, and get this book out of it, which I did. So that was more of a focus group driven book. Um, and thank you, Hillary, because everybody else is muted. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think, oh yeah, so I think just, I have a few cartoons, if you, I'll share my screen, I have a few of my most recent cartoons, I think, or actually one's an old one, but that I did for the New Yorker. Um, I was greenlighted to submit back in um, December of 2019, um, and so I've been doing five to 10, closer to 10 a week. So this was one of my first ones, and for those of you who know me, you know that my cat is named Lorene or my wife is Lorene, and it says, I'll be your server tonight. I actually, um, they, you can resubmit cartoons that don't get accepted, which is 99.999999% of them. I resubmitted this during the pandemic to say, oh Lord, not that again. Um, so that, I got two out of that. Um, the next one was after, you know, the novelty of Zoom, we have the Zoom seance. <laughs> and um, that one, um, the Abraham Lincoln thing sort of came to me at the last minute. Um, and then the one, I think I have the actually, oh, this is the one that ran, the, my, my first and only one to run, which ran in May. Um, but mommy, we just played Find Your Glasses this morning. Uh, that, that is the main reason why people have children, I'm pretty sure. All right, Hillary, your turn. I'll unshare my screen. So I didn't, um, I didn't do a PowerPoint, but I'm going to be using my little handy slide projector. And this, in the last few years, I thought I'd kind of approach this question a little bit um, academically, um, because I've been teaching single panel cartooning and uh, at the Center for Cartoon Studies in White River Junction, Vermont. So I was trying to explain, um, someone just said, why is Hillary in a jacket in the chat? It's normal. Slowly disrobing over the course oh, of crazy. this. That was my <laughs> first move. Um, and uh, I wanted to try and talk about what makes something funny. And I was reading uh, this book by Mort Gerberg, who was describing what is a cartoon? What is a single car uh, panel cartoon? And he said, a single panel cartoon is a violation of a cliche. So what's a cliche? A cliche is history, music, I mean, or mythology, fairy tales, even a shape. It didn't change how I thought about cartoons. I think about cartoons and I'll talk about my idea process a little bit. But um, I thought I'd show you an example of, of how, a, how a strip is a violation of a cliche. When you said violations, I feel like now I should apologize to all the cliches. Like, I feel bad you, about you, it. You, you should. This should be a listening okay. campaign. So look, Dad, the red part is over there and the blue part is over there. Science finally caves to politics. <laughs> Let's just talk about idea generation. I get a lot of inspiration from my feline and, and canine pals, um, but and one of the things that I do is kind of just a, I sit and I um, just brainstorm ideas in a sketchbook. And so I'll show you a sketchbook and I'll actually later to, today, hopefully we will go over something that a, a cartoon that I have the, the picture on, but I don't actually have a good cartoon for it. Um, a caption. A good caption for it. Exactly. You've Why? been like building a lot of anticipation with like the disrobing and what we're going to do later and all that. Yeah, well, you know. We want people to stick around. That's right. That's right. What sometimes I do is I will make a list of um, things on the left-hand side of the page and things on the right-hand side of the page. Like on the left-hand side of the page, I'll do a, um, I'll do person, people or, or animals. 
So I'll just make my list. And then on the right hand side of the page, I'll make a list of places or props. And then I try to justify why these two things make sense. Uh, one time I did a list and it was about, um, I had a snake with knitting needles and I was trying to justify why would a snake be using knitting needles. And so this is the cartoon that came from that. Anyone can knit, Leonard was hopeful. So that's a little <laughs> bit about my process. Um, we can carry on from there. I always come up with the idea first and then I audition the characters. So I've got this, I've got this idea and should it be a dog and a cat talking? Should it be a chart or a graph? Should it be uh, two men talking, two women talking? That kind of thing. So then I can pick up on my process. I used to think that if I had a good idea, I would remember it and now, um... I, I always have to write them down. But like Hillary said, it's not a um, thing where the muse strikes you. It's a sitting down at your desk and it's a process. So my press where their cartoons are due Tuesdays at noon, um, Wednesday, because I just handed them in, I take off. Thursdays, I sit down, I start to um, figure out some ideas. And, and these are, this would be like, a, oh, here, I, I like the reverse thing. All right, so this is like things I'll like write down in the car. I have Tiny Influencer, and I heard an advertisement about animal welfare certified steak, and that concerned me. Hmm. Um, so that got that made the list but i i actually just make a word list i don't have a sketchbook sketchbooks have always scared me um i've been a kid who would rip out the sketches because i didn't want someone to see them later so i you'll see i'm um my things are not very sacred and and from this idea list i will then call my my trusted um sort of first readers editors um karen who has been that person and also i have a young um, underemployed humor and writer who just graduated from Brown. It's Isabel underscore Brodsky. Um, she needs a job. No, you can, um, she's a great, she's a great writer. And I, I, when I started to do it, I thought of like, I need to boomer check my cartoons. So I check in with her as, as well. Um, and once I have some idea, five to 10 ideas, then I will go ahead and rough sketch. So this is, um, this is one that I just did this week. Um, uh, it's it's two elephants and and the one is saying I, I had my knees done and it doesn't have wrinkles okay because <laughs> it had its knees done all right um, so and after I do that I don't um, Hillary's trying to convince me and I'm almost there to start drawing on uh, the computer and I saw a thing about having a paper surface and all that I'm um, you know, I'm old fashioned. And uh, so I then throw that sketch on a light box and ink it and um, paint it. And with the New Yorker, I, I've now, st I'll do my sketches on Friday, Thursday and Friday, and then, and even Monday, and then Tuesday morning, I wake up at six and just, um, I'm like a Romco, you know, ink and paint o um, And so this is that, all right, there it is, finished there. I had my knees done. So um, that's pretty much my process. There might be a few um, lifeline type calls when I'm working out my captions um, on, on the day that they're due. Now that I, I've transitioned about, I don't know, uh, five or six years ago to a tablet. Um, and my process is very much the same, but now it is online. But I still do the same thing. I start, well, I start with the words, but then I blue pencil them up on the iPad and then I show them to either my partner Kristen or occasionally my collaborator uh, Rena Piccolo for the strip and I find that oftentimes the cartoon that I start with doesn't work and I think that it's frustrating but there's something it, it then becomes a puzzle like how do you get this to be the cleanest and clearest way uh, how do you design it? How do you get the wording just right? I think that the, the happiest moment is when you first get an idea and then it's this different part of your brain that comes up that's trying to, to craft it. And so by the end, you're either like, yeah, this is great or yeah, 
I am so sick of this idea. I've worked on it so long. <laughs> I don't know if it's funny anymore. I've stared, yeah. I've stared the fun right out of it. Yeah, I have some that also are funny, but they're just not for me. Like I, and sometimes <laughs> I think, oh, oh, the New Yorker would love it if I made that two women talking about it, about their children, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna make the children talking or something. I get this perverse kind of streak about it. So Wayne had suggested that we um, think of some questions to ask each other. And um, as long as we've known each other, um, this has been something, I mean, I have a few, but this, I don't know whether, which one to start out with, but I think, I guess I'll start out with this one. So how much do you weigh? Multitudes. Okay, it's your turn. Okay, and do you prefer edibles or, or flour, Susie? <laughs> um, you mean edible flowers? Oh, I must mean uh, that. I'm, I'm, yes. Um, um, nasturtium, peppery, mm. they're nice on a salad. Yeah. Yes. All right, well then, um, I'm curious because you, do you have this, with King Features, with your syndication, do they, further edit? Like once you turn in, do you, I mean, what is your, I, I have a, more than one question about your editing process, but do you get edited after you and Rena or you decide that it's uh, good to go? Uh, no, not really. They, um, King Features might edit for spelling or if I add a word or skip a word. Um, but at least my syndicate is very hands-off. Um, other mm -hmm. ones, I think it, it's a more, um, it's more of a conversation, but yeah. good news and bad news. Um, it really has not, I feel like I just send them into the, into King Features and then they distribute them out to um, newspapers that subscribe to Rhymes with Orange. Can you talk so. about your spelling errors? <laughs> My, just um, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I did make Earlier, early in my career, a big goof, a huge goof, but this was before the internet where you could find out things. I made an error, I can't believe I'm telling you guys this, where I had thought <laughs> that the Russians landed on the moon and a cartoon that referred to Russians landing on the moon. Um, Are you a communist? I, yes. Okay. Um, and so, that was a factual error that I wish had been caught. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, but you also like the editing process. You, you talked about like you think that that's where you have serious value added in terms of collaboration and stuff. And so how do you go about that? Is that I think my, my situation, so I did the strip um, for about 22 years on my own. And yeah. the idea of for me, I got to this point where like seven more ideas, it's, it felt like I'm going to always give it my all, but it felt less fun. And I'm a, I'm a team sport player and yeah. I had been a fan of Rena Piccolo's for a long time. And she did a different strip called Tina's Groove. And I kind of emailed her one day and said, do you want a job share? And at first yeah. she said, no. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. Um, because she thought she would have to do basically her strip and then half of my strip. And then I came back with the idea of what if we collaborated on Monday through Saturday and Sunday was my baby. Um, yeah. and she, she liked that idea and that worked for her. And, um, she ended up closing down Tina's groove and we, uh, started working together and she is such a professional. I love working with her and what happens from Monday through Saturday strips is she'll send sketches and I feel like what feeds me these days is punching up or, or yeah. how to edit or how to make this again that smoothest fastest read um, yeah. as possible and so that that has been a really I feel like between collaborating with Rena and um, teaching cartooning, I feel like that's kind of shed light into what was a very pressureful process. Yeah, it was interesting because when you talked about violating cliches, we talked about maybe doing this, but I have one part, I'm seeing if it'd be easier for me to just show it to you instead of sh screen sharing. All right, so I have one, and it was just 
it was an early one that I did for the New Yorker. I'm going to share my screen, and and I and if you can maybe Alakas, uh, because I don't think about it that way. So then I'm curious about whether what this what cliche this violates. Let me see if I can. So what is like? Do you have a thought about? Is well, that, yeah. The 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 cliche is that is that cannons go forward, not backwards. Okay. That wasn't hard. Oh, Do you have anything harder? No, because I never have, I've never been around a cannon, so I'll stop sharing. And you're, yeah, um, no, maybe I do. I don't know. I'm not going to do it. I know because I, now that you say it, I did start to see. I was like, oh, I had, you know, my buffalo who are at a diner saying, give me a buffalo who picks up his wet towel off the floor or whatever. I get like, oh, it's the, it should really, it's about surprise. I mean, that's what makes people laugh, I think, is the unexpected. All right, so do you have a, do you have a question? Well, I, you, I, I, I do have a question, but I do want to say that I am familiar with cannons because <laughs> my dad has a small cannon that he likes to uh, blow at the 4th of July. Wow. Yes. This, this year too, pandemic and all? Uh, he didn't, I, I, I wasn't, I don't think he did it during the pandemic. Huh? It's like Mary Poppins or something. It's more like Clint Eastwood than it is Mary Poppins. <laughs> it's more my dad's style. Okay. Um, but, okay, so a question that I have for you, Susie, is that one of the things, so I've been, I've been going to the Cartoon Factory every day for a long time, and you are so good at diversifying. You're very nimble. You've done kids' books. You've done um, New Yorker cartoons. You've done... Uh, graphic memoir, and you even done ghostwriting. And I want mm, just for you to speak about how that works for you and, and what feeds you and that kind of thing. Mm, uh, well, looking at your bank account mm -hmm. is always a good thing. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I have, I think I, I approach things a bit differently before I had a, a kid. And, um, and then publishing, I think, uh, you know, surprised all of us in print newspapers and things where things contracted and I felt like I had to be nimble to survive. But I also have always felt like when they, you know, I, when you talk to kids or kids in college or whatever, and they say, you know, what do you want to be? I've always felt that we, I had, well, I wanted to be more than one thing from a very young age. And so um, luckily, I don't, I, I don't think my my agent, who's been my agent since I was uh, in my late twenties for for thirty years almost now, um, she's been really patient. So I veered off and started a school because uh, I helped to start a school because that seemed like the most important, and it was also creative. So I just wanted to uh, I wanted to try out and exercise my creativity in different ways. And then with ghostwriting, that really came down to uh, it's harder to tell a uh, seven, eight, 10, 12 year old to tighten their belt. Um, <laughs> so I've started taking on a, a ghostwriting project usually um, every year. And I was pretty lucky because the first one I did was a cookbook memoir and ended up winning the James Beard Award. And that was ended up being a really fun, uh, we got to go to the award ceremony and eat food and have fun. Um, part, so part of it's curiosity. with you like? Like, um, was she open about saying, and here's my ghostwriter, or, I mean, no. what was that like? No. Um, she can, is she on the call? No. No, she, she, she wasn't really, um, she was very grateful, and, and that's true, like, and that's part of the deal, and I would have been weird. I mean, she did offer initially, I could put my name on the cover, and I thought, oh my gosh, my, I, I, you know, I always talk also, you know, when I had my thing at the Center for Cartoon Studies, and I told those students, you know, like, everybody's, on you about building a brand and I said like build a life you know like you can't count on a brand anyway so um I feel like I've had board books you know with teething quarters I've had like you mentioned I've had a variety of books it would have been better for my brand to do knockout gift book gift book gift book or middle grade illustrated novel middle grade and and I don't I think of my next idea and um and I trust that uh you know, my money's going to last me till, till the end or whatever. Um, 
so she said, oh yeah, put your name on the cover. I thought, what could be more confusing than me having my name on this particular cookbook? Um, so I, did, I didn't opt in, you know, she would, so yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we were talking, um, do you, I was asked this in front of, a, of an audience and, and I think we both have a, uh, probably have a similar point of view, but do you think that you can learn how to be funny or teach people how to be funny? So when you're teaching cartooning, people are in the room, is that, do you feel like, oh, they come with their sense of humor and you're working on other stuff or can you help them be funnier? I think I can. And I think <laughs> that the former New Yorker editor, uh, Bob Mankoff, talked about yeah. the, the perfect cartoon and the perfect cartoon is where if you had the if you had just the writing and you didn't have the picture you wouldn't understand it and if right. you had just the picture and you didn't have the writing you wouldn't understand it and i don't think that every cartoon has to fit that box i really don't but yeah. i think it's a good thing to think about when you're say when you're drawing something um how do you just draw just enough and write just enough but don't yeah. over explain or overdraw so that you give, you give the reader that ability to fill in the other 50%. And so yeah. I feel like what I'm teaching people is to cross stuff out and yeah. trust the reader. Yeah. I have, I have a lot of confidence in the reader. I usually leave like more like 90%. <laughs> no, I, um, I think I also thought about it in terms of kids and being a, a kid. Um, like a lot of times it's not, it's not encouraged, you know, it's viewed as a distraction. Um, being so, funny. Yeah. You know, like, okay, let's get serious. Um, All right, and right. I've always felt, I've always felt that if, if kids were encouraged and I think one of the best things for me was that uh, be, as I got started, I had a greeting card company mm -hmm. and I just saw the actual bottom line of the fact, and it, this is true of publishing too, where one third, and, and Louise, my operations manager from the Widget Factory will can weigh in on this, but um, one third of the titles carried the whole thing. So I, one out of three times I had to kind of get on base. Um, another third, it had to be solid. And then a third of them were gonna fail, but it wasn't so, and so I could accept failure. And, and so being funny is about taking risks. And I think if kids are in, it, uh, well, a lot of people experience it where they do fail um, and feel, feel reticent and don't practice. So it's like a, you know, it's like a muscle and the more you use it, the better you get to. Yeah, yeah, right. There's, I feel like when I'm drawing or when I'm telling students, I want to emphasize quantity over quality because yeah. that is actually the way that, that gets you there. But I think yeah. that if I were to say, to, if someone were to ask me how, how to be funny, I would say, talk about your truths because people, yeah. there's a kernel of pain in every single cartoon that people are responding to or largely in many, in many cartoons, there's a kernel of pain. Um, and so that's a good starting point for ideas, not to think, well, what would somebody, what would the New Yorker think was funny? But what do I find yeah, funny? Right, right. And um, Mark Gerberg came and talked to my class, uh, the New Yorker cartoonist, and he was saying cartoonists are like oysters. They get a speck of something inside them and it bothers them and they worry it and worry it and worry it and worry it. And then something good, it's transformed into something good. I've been, I've been thinking that some things I've become obsessed with that aren't, it isn't about that kernel of pain, but there are things that I do, um, am trying to work out. And I was trying, I, I was noticing that. I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, anyway, did you have another question for me? Well, well, one thing that I was thinking about, it's, it's fun to talk about ideas, but you did send me this, this very, do you think it's time for us to do our fun? Or, or our we could do the poll. Do you think the, the poll first? The poll. Okay. Should we do the, the poll? Because we can, yeah. So we've got, oh, it's not even close, I'm afraid. Dogs, 47%, bipetual, 31%, and cats, only 22%. That goes uh, against a lot that I know. I mean, I am, yeah. I am panpetual, but in terms of the market, yeah. Cat, Cat people buy stuff more right. than dog people. But 
that's because I don't, that's because cat people are, I don't want to generalize, okay? More, more book oriented. Library, you know, dog people, they go outside and plus the dogs eat their books. Um, yeah, but it's also because we're in Lexington where people have big houses and they can fill them with big dogs. We I'm are all over there. the place. We're all over the place. All right, well, okay. we are going to, to I want to tell a story. Okay, go ahead. Just about how Susie and I, when we were in our nascent friendship, um, I drive to Bolton and we take a dog walk and then I'm in, no. what? Go ahead, make oh, it have I, a happy ending. I mean, and, we're friends. Yeah, it worked out, but I, yeah. I'm, I'm going and we, I go and I see her studio and I come back and my down jacket, there's a huge rip in it because her dogs have eaten the biscuits out of my pocket. It's really bad. I usually tell them to take the money, but <laughs> we just went for the biscuits. Oh, well. Well, we were going to try and satisfy the entire audience by, I'm going to do a dog cartoon. Um, and Hillary is going to do a, uh, a cat cartoon. And we're not going to mislead you to think that we, we have given these a little bit of thought ahead of time. Um, so we'll, we'll do a quick uh thing and wayne are you going to do a drawing or something were you going to do a drawing for people that won cat books or dog books or something at this yes time? we will be we will be doing a drawing okay all right well all right so the funny thing i've noticed realized about both of us is that we're both um cheap i mean hillary's like the best person to call about like i'm like oh i'm going to get a document camera and she's like oh don't get a document camera get a bank's phone holder for $29. And so that's mm -hmm. what I did. I did so you're not said. even showing a real piece of a big piece of paper. You don't. <laughs> well, this is what I, this is what I would, I'm not, this is authentic. This is what I would really do is, um, all right. And so this was for me was inspired by my three trips to the uh, animal emergency. Um, are you drawing too, Hillary? Or am I just No, no, no. I'm going to watch you. It would be dumb. Oh. oh, okay. All right. All right. So I'm just going. All right. All right. So that's, that's the cone. Well, I'm gonna make it. This is my favorite eraser, the Sumo eraser. Um, but I'm getting, it's getting smaller. I make it so like the dog's nose sticks out. Okay. Um, my sister's painting teacher, when he taught me, told me that um, my, everything was, uh, it was problematic because everything is linear and flat and the world doesn't look like that, but it's how I see it. And I wasn't discouraged. All right, so. So he's looking at that, that. Then just for balance, I'll put a, a nice picture on the wall. Is it okay with my pencils? You said to do an ink. Is it okay with the pencil? I can see can it perfectly. See it? Okay. Someone wants um, to know what pencil you're using besides a short stubby one. <laughs> what type? I'm using, I love these um, Mars 2B. In fact, you can see, I, I, I save all of them. I love them. Um, okay. Um, I, I, I went in for these fancy um, Palomino pencils, but I end up giving them away. These are the ones that Hemingway and everybody used, and it's like twice the, wait, half the pressure and twice the speed, but I never use them. All right, so then I'll put this, and then the line is, this is the big. <laughs> there. Nice. See, I thought that Wayne was going to auction these drawings off and you're not even, you're so stingy, you're not even giving people a whole piece of paper. <laughs> oh, you wait till you see what my wife can do with that. She's in the framing business. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be good as new. Wow. All right, your turn. All right. All right. So I just thought I would, uh, oh, maybe I'll get a fresh sheet. Oh, oh, oh wow. I know, just to show off. Hold on. Yeah, well, you're doing better, you know, what with your syndication and all that. One cartoon a year in the New Yorker doesn't really. Oh, I got to tell you that pre pre COVID, I was really ahead of the curve with um, businesses dying. Uh, the newspaper, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the wa water's angry. coming in, water's coming in, and it is over my shoes now. So I started to take on some freelance work. Um, let's see, can people see this? Um, 
because uh, my collaborator, Rena, is doing this really neat thing called, oh, I, this is, t I got to start again. Oh. I know. All right. Are you should get, yo, so you're going to reuse the paper? Oh, look who's talking. Okay, I didn't, there was a new piece of paper that I hadn't. That you chewed on. Harder. Okay, let's take this offline. <laughs> Oh, okay. So um, I got it. I see in the chat, which I was attending to, um, uh, the caption for the dog one was, how long are you in for? The, the dog in the cone was looking up at the lampshade saying, how long are you in for? Tell me about how you found that young um, humorist that you like talk to ideas about. <laughs> she up there? Isabel, are you there? She said she was coming. Isabel? All right, anyway, she might be there. Um, she was, I, I mentor um, seniors at Brown or juniors and seniors. Um, and actually she wasn't my official mentor, but she was really interested in humor writing. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, and she's, she's great. Um, and so we talk probably uh, once a week and she does need a job, Isabel underscore Brodsky. No. Um, <laughs> Oh, Hildy. Yes. I just in the chat. My niece, um, who um, at a very young a age, my, no, she doesn't need a job. She, I, she's my lifeline. Um, she's my, she's on, on Tuesdays, like when I'm up against a deadline, I call her, I text her often because, because uh, she's, in class, um, supposedly. <laughs> but anyway, um, she helps me straighten out uh, my cartoons when, because um, uh, not everybody is available as she is. Don't and she's, you find she actually had this, she had this great idea, then it turned out it was, so I was working on like Knights of the Square Table and I was like, oh yeah, but what are they doing? Do they have like band-aids on their glasses or pocket protectors or whatever? Mm -hmm. And she's like, what about Knights of the Periodic Table? I was Ooh. like, oh my God, it's brilliant. But then yes. when I, I, I looked it up, it's already been done. I mean, uh -huh. you know how that is. People, people do, do these things and, but. Yep. This is my every day. <laughs> That's so great. So. Circle of life. Circle of life. You know, I feel like I, str I strain the friendships and relationships I have by bothering people about cartoon ideas. Yeah. It sounds yeah. like you've really cracked the code there. And can I have some of your friends and or relatives? Well, if, if you edit my cartoons, we might be able to work something out. I think that would be great. Okay. Um, well, I have to say I do it with humility. I mean, I am sure... I have gotten better though. There used to be a stage in my life where um, I, they would give an answer and then I would question their answer about 50 times. So I've learned not to do that. I just All like right. that you have a formal thing going and that people take your calls. I have great people that are very, <laughs> um, that are really helpful and really smart, but it wouldn't, it yeah. wouldn't be, it used to be actually back in the day, I would buy my um, old office mate breakfast and we would go over um, the cartoons. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. Oops. It's, it's, they want you to move the sketch up so they can read the caption. And also, if you want to just read the caption. Yes. Pet so. ownership in a nutshell. Have you run that one before? Yeah, I have. I have. Yeah, that's good. Um, so there's so a question. Have, yeah, go ahead. We have Wait. winners to our drawing. Oh, what? good. You ready for the big reveal? Oh, yeah. So, uh, Patricia Perry, congratulations. You win the dog books. Ow! Woohoo! Woo! Woo! And uh, Joan Turnberg. Joan Turnberg is the cat person. Now, and Joan and, 
And Trisha, if they're like, what if they're opposite? They could work it out online. If like a dog person got a cat book and a cat person got a dog they book, can, they, can, they can do and that. And then you could do TikTok like Susie right now. <laughs> We're starting a trend. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the big winner is Suzanne Bloom, the bipedal. Yes. <laughs> she oh my gosh. Another she's my she's my my fellow picture book author. Nice. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Hey. Well, she, that was random. <laughs> she's always been too cheap to buy my book, so this is great. I'm just kidding, just kidding. Right? You know. All right. There's, there's well, a, a chat. Suzanne, here. if you already own the books, we can send them to someone else. No, no, she needs, she needs to have more. Okay. That's so great. If there's Suzanne. a rickety chair or something to stick it in there. <laughs> yeah. Underneath the table. All right. So there, there that look like there are some questions in the chat. Should we deal with those? Yeah, but I still want to do this thing because I think it's fun. Oh, you want to do that now? All right. Let's yeah. have audience participation. Okay. We were thinking about doing a creating cartoon back and forth, but it, it, it was gonna be contrived, although somewhat dramatic. Um, so what we decided to do instead is, um, actually, it's oddly, I've been studying Donald Winnicott, the pediatrician and child psychoanalyst who originated this whole idea of squiggles. And you put a squiggle and then you pass it and someone finishes it. Um, so we had the accounting firm of um, Anderson, um, I don't remember all the names, but they um, handled our squiggles and we have neither of one of us has seen these squiggles and we're going to open them now and we're going to add to the squiggles, but we invite you. Oh yes. Price Waterhouse Coopers. Thank you. And Anderson. It was, Anderson was still with them at the time of this. And, um, and we invite you to take out a paper and um, pencil or lipstick or celery stalk or whatever you have nearby and and Just pull it out of the, the bloody mary and there you go yes yes all right so i'm going to go over to this area again don't you think it should be like we do yours and then we do we do yeah yeah. Okay. yeah all right so shall i put mine first yeah okay i'm moving that all right here it is now i i see it's addressed i see it's addressed this way and I turn it over. Oh, and it's upside down. That's tricky. But I got it. Um, when I'm opening it. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so they're kind of light. There's one, two, three. Now, should I attach them all or just work with one that I like? You should just work with one that you like. Okay. All right. So if you can see those one. You can put them on your paper, two, three. Um, and have, have fun. Susie, what do you do with all those stubby pencils that you keep? These, I just, they've served me. I don't feel that they should be thrown out. Huh. They, they're just, yeah, they're retired. And they have, they're in the sun, <laughs> and they have plenty of oxygen. This is a great game to play when um, there are hungry kids waiting for their dinner at a restaurant. Yeah. Or there's another good game, like where you just have them go up to the people and ask for the leftovers. Have you ever played that? <laughs> no. Okay. But I do, I do sometimes at a, at a nice restaurant, look when people have bought a bottle of wine and not finished it. And I, and I'm just trying to stop oh. myself. <laughs> oh, you're with that person. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to just go with, with, with that. I got a nautical feeling from this. I'll make this into a cloud up here. Wow. Uh-huh. Susie, if you could move your sketch a little bit to the left, it would be perfect. Very yeah, nice. Yeah, very good. Thank you. We're not being greeted, though. Okay. All your right, turn, Lori. I'll probably reuse this envelope, don't you think? Because you only addressed it, your return address in Florida, before you did the one in 
Massachusetts. Uh, it's because I was doing an I was doing a uh, get out the vote campaign, where oh, right. um, you had to put a you had to put the address in Florida. So uh, okay, first this is what she wrote. Oh, don't show that. <laughs> I, I probably do. Uh, you have something on your tooth. No, not that one. Oh, All right. Geez. Wow, these are advanced squiggles. We've got a. Wow, you really gave me some toughies. Oh. No, I think I think I got it. I think I got it. I got to just take it in. Yeah. It's not easy going first, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Actually, get this. All right. Oh, yeah. I love that. And then, and then, let's see. Hmm. You already did, too. I didn't do the third, but go ahead. Have yeah, a... no, I'm quite, I'm quite proud of this one. I, I have know to this say. Fact, but he's not yeah. going to win. The best he's going to do if he's playing with someone smart is Ty. How do you know that? How do you know that? Because that's what happens if you go first. Yeah, if you use the middle. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Susie, your intelligence just <laughs> down dogs me completely. Yeah, I know. It's it, I I monetize it every time I get. I am actually a tic tac toe executive coach, so Ooh. um, you're on yeah. the program. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, that's that. And should we answer some questions that came in, Wayne? Are there any questions in the chat that we need to sure. address? Here's, here's one. Do you think that your readers are more open to gay characters now? And would you consider using them? Hillary, did you submit that? I, no, I did not. <laughs> um, but we are two gay characters. It's true. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I think, okay, so it, when single panel cartooning, um, you are, you're using this kind of cartoon shorthand. And so um, what, what people have in the past done, if they see a male and a female, it reads as a relationship strip before you even read the, um, before you even read the caption. And so for me, I would try and get around that by, by A, using, using the term they, like my sweetie, they, this was way before they became, they then became a thing. This is back in the early nineties and having a, a grammar fight with my editor saying, no, no, I want to use they and putting the object of the affection off screen. Um, and that was a dog whistle to gay readers who recognized, because back in the 90s, we were all good at speaking in that coded language. Um, but I do think that things have changed um, from that time. And I do, when I'm, I do think about and do very occasionally um, use two women in a strip to demarcate a relationship strip. But the other thing that I've done in order to make it a gender neutral experience. So the experience, if it's a relationship strip and it's about a relationship and it's not tied to, um, it's not tied to a particular, he said, she said, they, sh they said, is that I'll use monsters as a way mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. And that was, that's been some, another way to kind of, um, yeah, it's another way of being inclusive. Um, I found the New Yorker is running, start, starting to run more um, gay cartoons, but I find with certain subjects um, that because the editors and that process is still predominantly, you know, heterosexual and stuff, the 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 gatekeeper and the, the these cartoons are sort of um, 
they're kind of rudimentary. Like they're kind of, oh, we're doing a gay cartoon and it can only go a certain way. So I've, I've tended to um, just not, not do much with it. I did an IVF. I tried having a mother um, with a, a daughter going to the hometown IVF saying, oh, this is where daddy and I met. Um, and that didn't go anywhere. <laughs> That's so funny. I've been trying, yeah, I've been trying it, but I think it's actually like our experience is beyond, uh, or the, it's beyond the editor's experience and therefore they're concluding it's beyond the reader's experience. So, um, but we're, I think the two of us, I mean, I had the same thing. Um, I just, I just went, and, you know, and I initially did stuff, it was as a, you know, a single woman and a cat or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, I just didn't, I didn't get into it. Um, but yeah. All right, another question. Another, another question is about deadlines um, and how how do you inspire creativity? You're on deadline and it's just not coming. Well, there's there's the secret special cartoon yoga position called ass in the chair. <laughs> that is very very important. But I also I also believe that there is a reason that I don't know if this is right here. Can you um? Go to my screen here. Do you ever have the Sharpies? That this, that this, and this are our bedmates there. And there's something about the deadline that makes you do it and, and, and makes it come through. But I, I feel like sometimes you've got to, you, if you're hammering, 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 trying to come up with something, the best thing you can do is stop and go for a dog walk or call a friend on the phone and I'm gonna get Susie's intern's number and start calling her. <laughs> she's not my intern, she's my colleague now. Colleague. I'm um, sure my mentee, yeah. My strategy all along has been to try and avoid the blank paper. So like that list that I happened to show people and I hope they didn't see it up close and are stealing my ideas, but I always try to have a backlog of ideas and I, try to leave one that I'm clear on undone for the next week. So I have a good place to start. And I'll say that to kids too. I'll say, um, well, this has been a bad year for school visits and stuff, but I love, you know, working with, with kids. And what I'll say is, you know, your teachers will often say, finish your sentence, finish your paragraph and put it away. I'll say, I'm going to tell you a secret in it. If, you, if that's what you have to do, go ahead, do it. But I'm going to tell you a secret that some of my friends and I use, which is that we stop in the middle of a sentence because it's much easier to finish the sentence and keep, keep going. Mm. So, um, so I see somebody asking about my new T-shirts, um, and I, I wanted to answer about that. Um, I do have these new T-shirts that I did um, that, that are for, for kids, and we have onesies, and they're also in the shop. Um, and then my, my hug shirt, that is a benefit. It was a benefit for Feeding America, but it'll be a benefit for, um, for Alex Art. So I want to thank you, whoever asked that. I wanted to thank them for asking that because I wanted to mention that. Well, so, it, and, and now, now that you mentioned the, uh, the 2019 versus 2020, mm. um, how, how do you keep your spirits up in, in these times. And it, it is, is the, the strangeness of 2020, is, is that providing grist for your mills? You want to start, Susie? I, yeah, I will. Um, yeah, I found it's, it was so strange between the masks and the social distancing and no hugging and working from home and school from, like, that I found it like very disorienting because in a way how I go about my work is like certain expressions or certain things will pop out to me. Um, and here, everything, everything, I just felt like everything had changed. And so I was sort of flooded and not trusting, you know, what was good and what wasn't. And then you start to think, oh my gosh, am I ever, am I going to have to always draw people wearing masks from now on and sorting that out? But on another level, as far as dealing with the pandemic, for me, I feel we're really lucky that we do what we do because it, you know, it doesn't leave a lot of time for wallowing and getting out of bed. We're out there trying to turn up things that are going to make people laugh. Um, and when my own spirits flagged, um, 
I actually went, you know, further afield and, and started in, in my town, uh, an Air National Synchronized Driving Association, and we performed, you know, synchronized car ballets in empty parking lots. Um, and that gave everybody, we, we got together in cars because you were allowed to do that and kept our distance. And I feel, I just about a week and a half ago, I started feeling the same need for some infusion. So um, what I've come up with now I don't, I don't know how to market myself exactly, but I want to um, hire myself out to participate. Well, you know, like there was a while when people were having, you could have a llama on your Zoom meeting. So I want people to hire me to be on their Zoom meeting and I'll be really good and, and sort of anonymous, but at a point I would just start to like ask the person who's speaking if they could put their subtitles on and start to kind of derail the meeting. So if anybody, <laughs> please message me if you have the budget for this. This is what I, I'm, I'm really committed to doing going forward. So it's kind of what your cat <laughs> does. You're stealing your cat's idea. To oh, okay. If you want to talk about stealing, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's as John, as Basquat says that once it goes through you, it is, it is your idea and it comes out. It's, it's an influence. So speaking of influences, one question is, do you two have favorite cartoonists? Hillary? It's a long list. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, so one of my favorite cartoonists in the newspaper is Dave Coverley, who draws Speed Bump, because I think he's so funny and I love the way he draws. But I want to tell you guys about a cartoonist that you may not know, who just passed away, and he was considered... Um, Argentina's um, Charles Schultz, and his name was Kino, Q-U-I-N-O. And um, he's known for, he had this kind of Lucy-esque type character and a strip called Mafalda, but that is not what I want you to look up. He did amazing single panel work. And so he is one of my, my very, very favorites, Kino. What about we you? Both we both like Michael Lunig, who's oh. um, in Australia. Yes. And my daughter's dad's um, Australian, so I've had a chance to hang out with him. We both like David Cypress, um, oh, yes. who's a cartoonist. Um, you know, we've got lots of Linda Berry, but I, I think it's, I know Wayne had asked us initially, like, trying to place our cartoons in the sort of lexicon of cartoons that are out there. And if you're going to do this in the long run, you really have to, you can have, um, you can have it, you can be inspired by, but you really, it really comes from your own point of, uh, point of view to, to keep going. I did, I do have a, um, you know, I, I was a fan of Gary Larson as a kid. There were a lot of cartoons I wasn't a fan of. Um, there were a few that I, I really d loved, like Marmaduke and stuff like that. But um, Gary Larson was, I was a fan. And I, I was thinking um, with the pandemic, I was thinking of that cartoon, The Real Reason Why Dinosaurs Became Extinct, where they were smoking. And I did um, this one where it has them with their masks around their necks saying, my body, my choice. But I say it's an homage to him. Um, mm -hmm. Any okay. other? Yeah. Okay, so so here we have one of those. Um, uh, Emily Passman has asked a question, but it's not um, it's not for herself. She says she's asking on behalf of a friend. Um, she wants to know if if a person has an idea for a cartoon. They're not a professional cartoonist, but they have an idea and they you know like to draw it. Is there any? How do you get it published or is there, what, what do you do with it? Okay. So, I mean, so they would draw it or they, if, would draw. they would draw, maybe. So if they're not sending it to me, which is the first idea that they should oh, wait a minute. pass it my way, <laughs> um, <laughs> that there's a great newspaper called the funny times, uh, which is out of Cleveland, Ohio, and they do single panel cartoons, um, and you can send them, and if they like it, they'll they'll publish it. So but they still give you like this is like fifteen bucks or something. It's, yeah, it's not or? for it's not for a lot of money. No, but it's a good circulation. Yeah, yeah, I really like. I think if you like single panel cartoons and you like editorial cartoons, boy, that's I I'm a subscriber. I love that publication. And there's humor writing as well. Yeah. Well, well yeah. since since we're on the the topic of um, 
people being closet cartoonists. Did you want to share a couple of drawings that might need captions? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Let's, let's yeah. Sure toothpaste, that we get some toothpaste of that. coming. I really don't have a, a gag idea for this. I mean, I have something, but I don't love it. And I was thinking about, um, hold on, let me cover other stuff. I was thinking about a king and a queen at one of those long, long, long tables. But instead of sitting at either end, they've, they've yeah. found each other sitting across from one another. And I think that, I think I love the visual. I never start with the visuals. I'm the worst at yeah. the caption contest ever. But <laughs> um, I want to, if, if anybody has any ideas for that, uh, please let me know. And this is, this actually is just a little, I want to just, pounce into something for a second, which is that to get cartoon ideas, sometimes it comes from um, personal life and sometimes somebody will suggest an idea to me and, um, and I'll thank them in the cartoon. And some people, there's a couple writers I know that will send me ideas and that's a good jumping off point. And if I use it, then I'll pay them and, and use it in the cartoon. Oh, I like okay, that. So yeah. we're starting... That people got the idea. Yes, please put your yeah. ideas in the chat. Oh, I love that. This does make it easier to pass the pepper. Okay, what's yours, Susie? You know, what did the one piece of popcorn say to the other? I do have an idea, but I've been working on this one for a couple of weeks. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I think I might have stumped the audience. Oh, Pamela. Oh, oh, I love, you got old. That's great. <laughs> Can we meet back here every week? And we'll yes, exactly. <laughs> so uh, the thing that I was working with is um, it's always darkest before the pharynx. <laughs> yeah, but I, so working, see? See? You can punch that right up. So, so actually that's, that, that, that leads to another question. Oh, no, don't make how, it mean. I, actually, actually, this is a two-parter. So how do you know when something is not working? And then how do, you, how do you know that, yes, that's it? Sometime you're like, oh, yeah, this is good. That's like 10% of the time. And then there's some that you do, and you've been working on it and working on it, so it makes more and more and more sense to you. And then you show it, and the people are like, and then you yeah. know that it did not, it is not reading. Yeah. So it's, it's really that that tells you. Yeah. Well, see, you, and I get, I get, sometimes I just go with it anyway. And sometimes I think it's funny and I send it. Um, but, um, but mostly it is that you get that blank like that was totally Lorene's reaction but then I had a friend who thought it was funny and I thought well I'm not giving up on it but I like this idea of a popcorn piece of popcorn talking to other piece of popcorn and I don't know what they're saying so I'm stick I'm just gonna keep it going mm -hmm. all right well you know one thing one thing that people will say to me is you know I didn't get it but maybe I'm just not that like smart or yeah. you know and I that is not true if you don't get yeah. it yeah you're plenty smart right right no but it, but i think there's some that like if you go in the new yorker there are people will always say oh i looked and they i just didn't get any of them and it's like they're not they're not for everyone like they're somebody's gonna get one thing sure. somebody's gonna get another so yeah right if it was for um, everyone it would be like the more vaudevillian uh garfield that's why kids love garfield is because they get them because the jokes are just like, it's right at that level. It's, it's like an animation cell. Oh, so like people who like Garfield are stupid is what you're saying? I'm saying they're childlike. Oh, okay. I'm saying they're infantile. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's not, okay. I don't think we should end on that. Oh, no. no, no, no. We have to be positive. <laughs> Does anybody, we have, do we have any other questions coming in from the, the crowd? Or should, do, we, should we, do you want another, uh, do you want another caption? Ooh. Uh, well, let's, yeah, let's do one more caption and then I think uh, it'd be time to wrap up. Okay. Okay. I'm going to draw mine up. 
So we'll do yours first, Susie. Okay. Well, I don't even have, I did a version of mine um, this past week, and I'm just going to say what it was. I started out with just, it was an, I, I've been on narwhals, and I guess there's a kernel of pain there. I don't know what it is. Um, narwhals, my first one was a nardu wall, and it had like a, <laughs> I looking. that's funny. Um, I know. Well, I'm glad you think so. And then the next week, I because it didn't go anywhere, um, I did a narwhal with, well, I've been also sort of obsessed, I, and I don't understand this one either. Well, I guess I kind of do. I was really horrified to hear that people in their 20s and 30s um, are, like, p women are considering, like, part of their routine expenses, and I, and I, I know of you know, I have, I have friends who are part of this, uh, are like, are like cosmetic things, Botox and all this stuff. And I just can't believe it. So I, I did, I've had a series of uh, cosmetic enhancement cartoons. I had a, a snowman wearing like Groucho Marx glasses and the other one saying, oh, he's had work done. And so now with the narwhal, I had the tusk in the shape of a pretzel. And I don't know if it's about having work done. What I ended up doing was have them at a bar and having the bartender saying, dude, let me guess, it's a long story with a lot of twists and turns. But just the plain old narwhal with the, with the pretzel, if anybody has anything for me. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm stumping the audience. I like a lot of twists and turns myself. I think that's funny too. Yeah. Thanks. Well, it's good. I, I, it, was a, it turned out being a bar scene. Yeah. All right. Have you, how's your sketch going? Oh, oh, a swim up bar. I'm dying here. I'm dying. Up, what about a swim up bar? That makes yeah. more sense. Sometimes when I'm talking to people about cartoons and I get into fights with Rena about this, my collaborator, yeah. where I was like, a narwhal can't be in a bar, right? Because they, <laughs> and she's like, it's a narwhal talking. Yeah, and exactly. I, but I do think that there's this cartoon logic that happens and we have different lines yes. where it does make sense and it doesn't make sense. Right, right. So yeah. mine is... Your, your line is wrong. Okay. So here's, it's, it's an umpire and there is a kid asking for the autograph of the umpire but I don't want it to be about like, oh, you're so blind or something like that. You know, like, I feel like why would a kid ask the umpire for an autograph in a non-snarky way? Okay. Well, you're going to yeah, have to keep that one in the I know. I know. It's a hard one. Somebody, <laughs> somebody asked, what was that yoga move from about deadlines again? Yeah, it's called ass in the chair. Yeah. That's the Sanskrit yeah. name for it. Oh, I like this one. I just need one more to complete the assignment. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have done that to people. Well, I feel like we should leave them with a more... Something better yeah. than a... Yeah. Than uh, what I did. We, we, You're welcome. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I got us on the, the, the trend with my popcorn. Don't, we'll get the goldfish. Oh, I know. I have one more question for you. Yeah. Um, um, what's on your, what's left, what's on your bucket list? Oh, I'm working right now on a chapter book. Um, oh, I meant like what kinds of buckets? Oh. Just kidding. kidding. Oh, slop oh. buckets, slop buckets. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, You're perfect. Yeah, this is my first, I, it's, it's a kid's chapter book and it'll be like an illustrated uh, novel, not a graphic novel because I like to draw, but not that much. And um, yep. Cake and great. This it's been that. fun to um, think about characters. It's about a, a friendship yeah. between two animal characters. Yeah. Great. What's fun. on your, I'm glad uh, that you have my bucket list? Um, oh, I know. Yeah, I'm trying to go more places with graphic medicine, which is um, where I've kind of landed after doing illustrated memoirs about I had my brain surgery and one good egg. And I just did, I just finished today an essay for a scholarly publication on 
on graphic medicine, which for those of you who don't know what it is, I seem to be terrible at explaining it, but the genre of um, patient stories, caregiver stories, um, things like that, um, memoir generally, it's uh, called narrative medicine, and then a subset of that that would have visuals is called graphic medicine. So that's kind of where I did it without knowing there was a name for it before there was a name for it. So now I've done workshops um, and uh, examined it sort of from a scholarly angle and then also have, have done it. So I'm really liking it. And I, I love it because of, well, I know like with my, my cat book has sold 2 million copies, but the brain book um, maybe has sold 40,000, but I get, still get letters from people. And I, I, I imagine there might be some people or I, actually I know for sure Nan is on, on this, uh, at this meeting, but I've, um, I hear from people regularly. I get way more letters from that where people have found that they're much less alone in their experience. And, and that's really why I do the stuff that, that I do um, is to connect. And I realize like with the cartoons and, and that grind that you know of doing that many a week or whatever, but there's something really satisfying because if my whole thing was to connect and be understood, it's, I'm so, it's sort of insecure that I'm, it's not enough for somebody just to read it. They have to laugh at it. Then I know they for sure they got it. So anyway, that's kind of, that's where I'm, I'm at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank like you my both. Therapist. <laughs> that that thank is, is a wonderfully inspiring thought uh, for us to end on. Um, thank you both uh, Susie Becker and uh, Hillary Price Thank you to all of you um, for, uh, for joining us. Um, I will uh, invite you uh, for two things. Um, one is um, stop by anytime at lexart.org and uh, visit what we have uh, online, whether it's our merchandise shop where you can pick up some Susie and Hillary things or looking at some of the things we have online from our own uh, artists or our classes and so forth. Thank you again and hope to see you on the third Thursday of November um, with Ann Woodworth and uh, Bundy Boyd and we'll hear about their collaboration. Mm -hmm.